Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Lads Discuss Death Battle. I am Billy and we are here to discuss Batman's fourth Death Battle. Joined with me as always is Sean. Hello everyone, I hope you are fantastic today. And the other guy. I'm sorry, the other guy couldn't be us. Hi, uh, I, I'm your only mate. Oh yeah, and also your only mate. Sorry, the other guy wouldn't be able to arrive today. It's unfortunate. Darn. Yeah, we've been oh, trying well. to find we've been trying to find a replacement for Steve for a long time, but yeah, it's not working out. <laughs> no, we've just been trying to find a guest. <laughs> yeah, we finally got the other guy to agree to it, but then he didn't show up for a third time. <laughs> But anyway. it wasn't for a fourth time. Speaking of fourth times, uh, see what you did there. <laughs> speaking of fourth times, let us discuss Batman versus Iron Man, the fourth Batman death battle. Which, if I had to be honest, they really should have just called this the Hell Bat suit. Because let's be real here, everything else Batman had on him was practically uh, not used in this fight. <laughs> yeah. It, it really wasn't. Like, the only thing he really used out of his utility belt, which they spent a while on, was just the grappling hook and batarangs. And he only used those once. So, Batman returning for a fourth time. Now, in a way, I kind of want to say this is... I've said this before many times we've discussed this particular episode. When you do look at the Batman vs. Captain America episode, you could argue that was more made to be like... A filler episode just because uh, they had some technical difficulties. But yeah, this... it was because uh, they had a hard drive failure with yep. Godzilla vs. Gamera. Yeah. So they just put that out to make up for the gap between episodes. Thank you, Tech. Um, yeah, so. And in a way, I guess you could say Batman vs. Spider Man was a. I, actually, no, I don't consider the episode outdated. I still kind of think the outcome could stay the same. Um, it stays the same. But at the same time, I can understand people wanted to see a Batman with his full arsenal, which they totally could have done in Batman vs. Black Panther. But again, at which, this was, even though that was my favourite episode of the Batman fights, Batman did feel underutilised with his equipment. Like, he just used. I disagree. I'd actually argue that Spider Man was his best fight. Oh, um, that's fair enough. I'm just saying, you know. I just feel like if you're going to bring Batman back for a third time, second technically, if you don't count the filler one, then maybe increase his arsenal and don't give him the exact same amount that he's had. Because here's the thing, Batman's standard arsenal has kind of changed over time, let's be real. And when I, you know, when it was revealed a uh, Hellbat, which I originally thought was, when I saw that teaser, I originally thought, oh, is this like a new Batman character I've never heard of? But it turned out, no, it's just Bruce Wayne in a Iron Man-like suit. I was still excited. I was like, ooh, I've never heard this suit before. But again, but then they told it, no, this is definitely Batman. We're going to give him everything. We're going to go through all his arsenal again. I was like, oh, for Christ's sake. <laughs> I was very tempted to skip through a lot of that episode because of the fact I know everything about Batman. Well, not everything about Batman, but I knew basic knowledge on him based on the comics I've read as a kid and the movies, the TV show and of course the death battle and So you weren't a fan of him coming back since season 5 Yeah and I understand Batman's a really surprisingly even though the vocal minority complain about Batman coming again he is still heavily requested a lot. In fact even now there's still people requesting him to fight Moon Knight which I don't think they're going to do at least I, I, hope hope they don't. I hope they don't, even though Moon Knight is getting a Disney Plus series. Right. Yeah, I feel like that's why people are wanting this more, is because Moon Knight's getting more... What would you call it? Like, screen time? Dude, if you ask me, if you really want to bring a Batman back, then put um, Thomas Wayne's Batman from the Flashpoint universe against Moon Knight. Because isn't Moon Knight basically Batman if he killed? No, Moon Knight actually has superpowers. I have no freaking idea. I don't know who Moon Knight is or what he's about. And to be fair, welcome to being fans of Marvel, where we know pretty much nothing at 90% of the characters, unless they're Spider-Man. Although, they tend to have, you know, good entries into the MCU, like Shang-Chi. Which I have yet to see, so no spoilers. Shh. Oh, go see it. It's so good. I will at some point. 
Um, okay. Speaking uh, of the MCU, yes. that brings you to Iron Man. Exactly. Iron Man. Now, in a way, I was also excited to see... In a way, I don't like Returning Commands, but I think like, over time I've kind of accepted the fact Death Battle is inevitably going to bring back certain characters for certain matchups based on their popularity, or etc. Yeah, as, as you've said, you don't like Returning Commands, except Doom. And then Kuma. <laughs> All right. Oh yeah. <laughs> okay. Do you know, I'm just going to make this clear. Listen, I don't hate returning combatants anymore. Can we just get that out of the way now, then? <laughs> yeah. Also, sure. you know what? These two special episode to... just for Billy. <laughs> special episode just for Billy. Doom versus Sakuma. Let's do it. Does, <laughs> does these two constantly barrage me with the fact? Oh, it's another return command. Yet you seem excited. It's like, right, that's it. I'm putting this joke to the grave. All right. <laughs> Speaking was of a joke, I thought that was an actual opinion you had. And we're just going to mute Sean for a little bit. Because <laughs> I've learned how to do that now. Thank you, Sean. <laughs> Alright, so... I haven't actually done that, by the way. <laughs> uh, for those who can't see, he just uh, Sean just put a gif in our group chat. Just, bruh. <laughs> just, just put that image on the screen, Sean, because I feel like this is even going to be... Yeah, this is going to either be nightmare fuel, or it's going to be amazing. <laughs> All right, so we've delayed long enough. Um, Iron Man, as much as I was annoyed he was getting into Death Battle, people were bringing up a lot of other suits that he's had over time after Lex versus Iron Man. And since this was technically going to be Iron Man versus the Hellbat, which really is what the episode should have been called, I was a bit more excited about it. And a, but at the same time, I still wasn't really that excited for Iron Man returning because I've said this in the previous episodes. I feel like Lex versus Iron Man was the, I know people find this cringy, the perfect matchup. Because it really was. Because Iron Man and Lex have a lot in common. It's just that their ideals are kind of like rivaled, you know. Iron Man's a hero, oh, yeah. Lex is a villain. Unless you count the time he became yeah. Superman, but that was weird. <laughs> oh, also, um, after Lex versus Doom, I've seen a lot of people say, okay, so Lex beats Tony now, right? No. Yeah, uh, after this episode, <laughs> no. I guess we might as well get to a point. Batman lost again, which I've, I'm going to be honest here. It's getting harder and harder for Batman fans to probably enjoy Death Battle <laughs> because I mean their win streaks have not been good. <laughs> I mean, Nightwing won, and so did Joker. Yeah, so... Th yeah, but Joker had a stomp fight, whereas at least Nightwing had a very close one. Also, I have heard it's debatable whether or not Joker would win if they were to do that fight nowadays. Twisted Metal's got nothing new. Yeah, Twisted Metal's kind of uh, dead in the war, which is unfortunate. It's a good game. Anyway, before what, we what get off topic... Yeah, you know, we still got Nightwing. <laughs> yeah, so... Yeah, okay, I just want to make this clear, people. If you're really going into Death Battle and hoping that at some point one of your favorite characters is going to win, you're going to set you up for disappointment. Never go in with that mindset, because you're setting yourself up for failure. Because <laughs> there's a chance your character might win, but there's also a chance they might not win. And yeah, I remember once seeing Ben 10 in Death Battle, that finally happened. I was excited, and then he died. Yeah. And there it is. <laughs> My goodness, sir. Uh... Why does that episode always get brought up in this series? <laughs> so, uh, I guess I might as well just seg my, some way, somehow segue my way into this episode. Um, Iron Man versus Lex Lu uh, versus uh, oh my goodness, Batman versus Iron Man. We're not talking about Iron Man versus Lex Luthor. This is why I need a script when I uh, say my pieces. <laughs> <laughs> so. This, I'm going to get into starting off negatively. It's not too negatively, and I would say these are more nitpicks. So, starting off with Batman's analysis. Really, there was no point to mention, because 10 minutes of it was pretty much, or not 10 minutes, but 5 minutes of it was just talking about everything that he's had in like the previous episodes. I feel like it's necessary to talk about his fighting capabilities and his detective uh, mindset. Because uh, I feel like that's important for Batman's character, but if your if your fight is mainly going to be featuring his armored suits like the Hellbat, well, actually the Hellbat was the only suit he used really, which mate is going to oh, yeah. talk more about a certain suit which people are bringing up. Oh yeah, I will. And 
I'll be honest, I was more interested in learning more about the Hellbat suit than I was hearing about his batarangs for like the 20th time. <laughs> or yeah, I also... I'm just gonna quickly scroll through what they listed for equipment. Uh, standard bat suit, bulletproof, automatic taser, utility belt and gadget, justice buster, designed to battle the Justice League, carry several mini red suns. Okay. Uh, final bat suit, powered by sunbox, can alter minds. Hellbat, a highly powered uh, nano kinetic suit created by the Justice League, absorbs biomass as its fuel, stood up to dark side. Yeah, so. Really, I just don't feel like there was any point bringing up his, like, his stand weaponry if you're not going to really focus on that. Because the main thing about this episode, which you may not uh, think when you stare at the thumbnail, is that it's mainly about the hell bat suit. And really, yeah, that's what this episode really was. It was the hell bat versus the Iron Man. And let's be real here. The hell bat suit, when it was actually brought up in the analysis... I was thinking to myself, okay, it was even more impressive than I thought, because I knew brief things about it, I've seen it in a few comics, but I wasn't aware of, like, how, like, powerful it was. It's had, like, it's been, like, forged by Wonder Woman, Superman, Cyborg, The Flash. Uh, by the way, can I just say, shout out to Ger Gerardo for editing that shot of, like, Superman in the sun with a hammer. Yeah, that, that, as they're talking yeah. about it. That was a good shot. But just, like, the editing of these, like, comic book panels in general. Hmm. Uh, okay, this is also uh, going to follow into our next minor complaint. But this isn't about the Death Battle episode. This is more or less about the Hellbat suit. So, it was forged by the Justice League, one of them being Cyborg, one of the most technological, uh, technological like, superheroes out there, who was nearly impossible to hack unless you're on his level, because he's practically a supercomputer, that even other super-powered characters like Brainiac can't even hack, yet he didn't think to give the Hellbat suit some sort of defense for hackers. I think, I th logically, they probably did that in case Batman ever went rogue. Right, but I'm, unless that was brought up in the comics, I'm not sure. Considering he knows he's insane and how powerful the suit is. Actually, yeah, you know what, that makes sense. Well, here's the other good thing about it, is that if they're so worried about that, though, is Batman really going to try and use the suit to defeat the entire Justice League when it nearly kills him to use it? Really, they just have to delay the fight long enough till he dies if he goes rogue. I don't know, like, this isn't anything to do with the Death Battle episode, this is mainly to do with the, the writers of Death, uh, DC deciding, nah, the suit can be hacked, uh, Cyborg didn't do anything with it, it's like... Well, that's stupid. These are the same writers that just go Speed Force. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, we'll get to that bit later. Force. Now, this goes into... This follows into the final... Essentially, the battle. Um, it was epic. Like, from start to finish. Uh, Batman... Which I, was, I did kind of like the little detail that he tries to call the Justice League before fighting Iron Man. Because, yeah, that makes sense. His watchtower was being under attack, so... I would try. It's not just his watchtower, it's their watchtower. Yeah, so it would make sense that he would uh, call for backup. However, Iron Man saying, sorry, I hacked into your signal. Bullshit. <laughs> because unlike the Hellbat well, I mean, suit, I mean, Cyborg... he just says he figured out hacking in the second grade. Yes, he which... would not be able to f hack the, the Justice League tower. That is bullshit. <laughs> Brainiac can't do it. Cyborg can just about do it because he designed it. Like, I mean, either way, the bat, the tower got destroyed anyhow. True, and because yeah, he used it as a freaking club. <laughs> yeah, which uh, I keep getting off topic. Um, so <laughs> take the watchtower offline, Bruce. Fine, wax him over the head with it. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Okay. Well, I guess I'm going to avoid that and then talk about the other shot that I loved about uh, this episode. When uh, Iron Man at first tries to attack Batman, he goes into stealth mode, and Iron Man is just say, like mocking him, and then Batman appears behind him in his Hellbat suit. By the way, cool freaking shot. I love that. <laughs> I was, I was also, like, also, there's a lot of meme potential there. Did anyone get Snake versus Sam vibes from that? Because I got those kind of vibes. Anyway, um. I 
Anyway, <laughs> I, I forgot what I was going to say now. <laughs> Fuck it, let's get to the next part. So then they're on Earth, after Batman used the tower as a club, knocking Iron Man to the ground. And just Iron Man summoning all his suits, his God Buster, and then Batman unleashing like some sort of shadowy fog to then take out a majority of their suits. Holy crap, that was so fun to watch. Like, damn. That was pretty cool. That How many sprite artists worked on this episode? It's insane. Yeah, considering all the different Iron Man armors I had to make sprites for, or like reskin. War yeah, Machine. And I'm pretty sure I saw the Iron Patriot in there too. Oh yeah, the Iron Patriot's there. Dude, there's probably so many Easter eggs with those iron suits, like, it's insane. <laughs> um, so, and then it comes to the another really cool factor of the fight, when uh, Iron Man and Batman essentially get knocked out of their suits, and it is just them fighting. At first I was thinking, like, and at that point I was like, yeah, Batman's losing, because they're nowhere going to do Tony this dirty. <laughs> and Also... There's a line I really want to talk about uh, because I noticed, you know, with a subtle detail, they give it a double meaning. So after the Hellbat gets hacked and it cuts to the first person perspective, the Tony going, how to divert some power into hacking the suit? Like I said, second grade. Because, yeah, he figured out hacking in the second grade, like he said earlier. But he points at the Hellbat as if he's like going, yeah. That tech is second grade compared to mine. Hmm. Like, damn, like that little detail, they made it a sick bun. <laughs> yeah, which I don't admit, I'm not sure uh, Okay, this I'm probably sure I'm pretty sure this isn't uh, you know, Death Battle shitting on Batman, which should probably make clear. This episode was not shitting on Batman. They made him sound really epic in the analysis and in the fight as well, they showed he was a badass. Tony's just a snarky little bitch. <laughs> Yeah, he is. So he is going to mock Batman. He's going to mock his suit. You know, because I did see a few comments on uh, Rooster Teeth's site where they're like, oh, wow, what a way to shit on Batman by saying, oh, Tony, figure out all his tech. It's like, look, it's Tony Stark. This is what he does. <laughs> he's, yeah, he's a snarky arsehole. Like, remember in the Avengers after his fight with Thor, his first words were, no hard feelings, point break. you got to mean swing. And just say, like, taps his uh, bicep. Yeah, it's like... That is part of, like, Tony's personality. It's not specifically death battle shitting on Batman. <laughs> and then we come up to the death, which... Holy crap, what a way for Batman to go. <laughs> Tony's... And I gotta oh, say, okay. Uh, no, sorry, you, you go. <laughs> Tony's on the floor, practically bleeding to death after he got his arm broken, which, I have to admit, was pretty dang brutal. And then... Just before Batman goes for the killing blow, Iron Man uses his very last suit, which I do like the fact as well that the Hellbat suit technically destroyed the Godbuster. And it was mostly due to Tony's intelligence that managed to get him to get Batman out of his suit. Yeah. And then it resorted to him using it, which I actually completely forgot about because they glossed over it, and I think they did that intentionally, where they mentioned the suit that could shrink down and then enter your body. Because I was thinking, all right, that's probably not going to be too important. But then, big shock, mm -hmm. it got into Batman and straight up puts him in the suit. And Tony's just like, Friday, destroy the suit. And I was thinking Batman was going to use his escape artist sort of technique. And he's going to get out of it. And then he was going to try and deliver the killing blow. But then, nope, straight up disintegration. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, wow, that is, has to be the most sickest way to kill off a character. And it actually worked mm. this time, unlike in the Iron Man movie. Yeah, I was going to say, this death is straight out of Iron Man 3. Uh, it's what he tried to do to Killian. Yeah. It it was a really sick way for Batman to, to be like taken out, because... I'll be honest, if Batman was killed by just a basic repulsor blast or just an energy beam, I was like, eh... That's not deserving of the Batman. But no, being restrained in a suit and then blown up, yes. <laughs> also, I just want to say, as Tony says, initiate self-destruct and starts walking away. Okay, I was uh, re-watching the first Iron Man film and it just reminded me of that, you know, tank missile scene. Yeah, I did. just to leave after he puts things in motion. 
yeah, I did. Uh, I did get that vibe as well. I was just like, that's straight up out of Iron Man One. <laughs> yeah, so it was a it was a really fun episode, and I definitely feel like Tony, with all his armor and stuff like that, he definitely deserved a win uh, because. Yeah, I get people are complaining that there was no point bringing Batman back if you're just going to kill him off again. But, like I say, like they're not going to rig a fight so that one character wins. Would I? Yeah, they're not going to do all the research and then decide to do an episode. It's like that is stupid. Exactly. Would did yeah, I? Yeah, what they do is they decide. Okay, these are the episodes we're going to do. Researchers, get on it. Like, would I have preferred Batman to win? Of course, he's one of my favourite characters. I'm not a huge fan of the comic book Tony Stark, but I do like the MCU version. And you, you also would have preferred him winning because this means you are the only one with a loss so far in the podcast. Eh, I mean, I don't really care for that bet anymore. But anyway. Uh, so, yeah, it's unfortunate Batman lost, but... Again... It's a death battle. Your favorite characters are gonna lose. It's sometimes a 50-50 chance. <laughs> and... I mean, technically my most wanted, one of my favorite characters was going to die inevitably anyway, so... <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Although I long came to terms with that, so... So, I guess my final say on this episode, uh, the soundtrack was really epic. I loved it. I can't wait until it's out and I can listen to it on my way to work. And I'm just gonna pull up the Death Out wiki for a sec because I think they have the lyrics listed. Nice. It might. Uh, this was a Brandon track called "Suit Up." All right, so I guess I'll uh, suit yourself. All right, I'll end my points. Oh, we're so we're coming up to the 20 minute mark. Um, yeah, I enjoyed this episode. I definitely think it was an epic way to start off the second half of season eight. So I shall hand this over to Shawnee Boy. Alrighty, I'll try to talk about the things that Bill hasn't brought up yet as well. Um, for example, I really, really love the animated stuff with Wiz and Boomstick this time. I thought it was hilarious. Like, whether it be the zebra-painted Batman suit, or the ending where Boomstick goes, Oh, come on! You know if they, if they fought naked, Batman would just beat the shit out of him, and then he just has, like, two, like, dolls. That was pretty yeah. funny. Oh. By the way, on the commentary, Chad said the... He likes to believe it's canon that Boomstick has naked dolls of every character that's been in Death Battle so far. Of course he does. <laughs> weird underwear, okay. Like, not too weird. It makes you wonder where he gets them, then. <laughs> but, the Iron Man analysis, as it was going on, just, it just escalates because that's how comic books go. It just makes you go, what the fuck? You have so much shit. What is this, Link's analysis all over again? I swear, both Link and Iron Man have so much stuff in their arsenal, it's absurd. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, like, did you see my reaction? Uh, just, just my face when they were going through, like, the more insane crap Iron Man has? Like, the escape <laughs> to the Godbuster, like, Jesus Christ, man. It was so good. You know what else was so good? The voice acting that we got in this episode. I have the tweet pulled up here from Marissa. And voicing Batman was Twitter user at Get Gianni. And if Gianni sounds familiar, that's because he voiced Lex earlier this season. And I gotta talk about how unfortunately hilarious that is because, okay, he voiced Lex Luthor before losing to Iron Man. And then he comes back as Lex Luthor for this season, loses, and that insult to injury, the sprites for his war suit were reskinned Iron Man sprites. <laughs> Just nothing he can never escape the <laughs> Iron Man. Oh, and he now can. he's voicing Batman and dies to Iron Man again. <laughs> can you imagine I don't know whether... Go ahead, Bill. Can you imagine he gets brought in to do a, like, a voice cameo and he's just like, Oh, who am I voicing? Oh, you're just going to briefly voice Tony Stark. <laughs> I was just really like, fuck. <laughs> he's like, can I get away from Iron Man, please? <laughs> yeah. Also, this, time, this means that Gianni died again. Like, he can hasn't gotten call... a single win. Can we call Gianni the new Nick yet? I was about to say. <laughs> yeah, G Gianni is the new Sean Bean of Death Battle. Confirmed. Oh, that, that is tragic. 
Alright. Hey, how long yeah. did Nick have to hold that title? True. Oh, until, he, back. until he finally won as Danny Phantom. True. Yeah, Danny Phantom was in season seven, and he started in. What was Ben vs. How? Season five? Uh, no, his first role was Mario vs. Sonic in uh, oh, season yeah. five. Yeah, season oh, yeah. Five, so, like, at least one full season now. Well, to be fair, Gianni, you've been cursed in season two at this point. Actually, is also Ben's wife a voice actress for Devval, and she's not had a single win? I don't think they're married. Aren't they married? I don't no, think so. Was... Maybe I'm thinking of Chad and his wife. Yeah, you're thinking of Chad. Well, even then, like, his but, uh... girlfriend, she's never won a death battle, has she? No, she was Ooh. Bayonetta, Renamon, and uh, she also played, uh, what was her name, uh, Noin in Tigers vs. Zepion. Mm. I thought she voiced, uh, couldn't she voice Captain Marvel too? No, 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 that wasn't her. No, but she hasn't also gotten a win, which is unfortunate. Yeah, that just started a, a joke trend of they always kill Ben's girlfriend. Speaking of actors who who got a win, Iron Man's actor this time was not played by the same person as last time, unfortunate. Uh, we had Reagan Murdoch voice Iron Man. I love that someone called Murdoch voiced a Marvel character. <laughs> the irony. But, Wait, um, is that irony? Because Murdoch is actually a character in Marvel. It would have been more ironic if he voiced a DC character. Just for chits and giggles, can we just bring him back to voice Daredevil if he gets a second fight? <laughs> <laughs> is but, he even um, requested to fight anyone else? I don't think he is. It was uh, in... There's Kenshi from Mortal Kombat. Oh, yeah, that's oh, right. You're dead. you're dead, Daredevil. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, well, I may be blind, but my senses are hyper. He's like, oh, my senses are hyper too, but I also have the ability to literally crush your organs as you're standing there. Oh. And also this, and he just pushes down Daredevil's ribcage, like an MKX. <laughs> yeah, it's... Yeah, and not only that, he also has a samurai spirit that fights alongside him, so it's like, yeah, you're doing. But going back to Reagan real quick, um, it didn't be... This felt like an Iron Man from, like, the cartoon series, actually, with this voice, which I liked, because it gave us something different than what we're used to in the Robert Downey Jr. portrayal, which uh, Chuck did when he was Iron Man. Yeah. Huh. It makes sense, really, because Robert Downey Jr. as Iron Man is such an iconic role now. Oh, yeah. Like, I can't imagine anyone else playing Iron Man. Like, in the live-action no, movie. I, I, yeah. Yeah, I don't think so, either. Uh, but, the voice acting Sorry, that was, my can. was was fantastic. Like, I think they both did a great job. Some people were saying that they could have probably gotten someone else to play Batman, but... Yeah, I think I thought, Gianni did great. I thought he did a really good Batman. I don't know what people are saying. People, I think people were speculating that it was going to be the Batman from Jason versus Bucky. Do what Batman and Death Hours had so many voice actors. <laughs> one of whom uh, also voiced Blake's dad in Ruby. <laughs> yeah, that was the one in uh, Batman Beyond versus Spider-Man 2099. Yeah, yeah. I just wanted to. Uh, okay. Okay, it's a quick tangent here, but I'm sorry, Batman Beyond vs. Spider-Man 2099 came out the same week a Ruby episode came out that featured a bat faunus and a spider faunus. <laughs> what? The, the spider faunus, by the way, had natural webbing. Do, do you know what I'm just imagining? I'm just pitch, um Have you guys ever seen It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia? No. There's a scene where this guy has like this big board of like connections and he's going absolutely mad just looking at the board like there's oh, a that's what that's from <laughs> That's what I'm just picturing mate is like every single day like new comes out for death battle saying new for Ruby like alright guys listen here <laughs> Ah no I'm done with that Blake vs Meekster has already happened. Yeah, but now you're trying to find new things like alright guys listen up <laughs> I think here's Ruby is foreshadowing. But, um, voice acting in the sprites were fantastic in this episode. Like, the Tony sprite, I did not expect them to actually do a human Tony sprite. Yeah, that was... A but I liked it. Yeah, in some shots, like, you could, you could easily tell it was a puppet animated. Yeah, it was, it was mainly noticeable when he got his arm broken. You could clearly tell that, um, 
they weren't able to animate it to look very fluid, but when he was on the floor and when he was climbing out of his suit, you know, it looked pretty good. It was just until his arm got broken, I guess the literal sprite also got broken. <laughs> also, like, okay, go ahead. I kind of want to see, uh, like, a post Death Bow fan comic now where it's just Tony clutching his broken left arm in pain. And next to him is Blake still missing her left arm going, Oh no! That's terrible! I'm so sorry! <laughs> and just for a I'll wholesome like, comic... I'll, I'll be like, Friday, fire the laser! And just for a wholesome comic, I'd love it if Batman's like talking to a very to a person who's very sad after losing a death battle, but, he, but Batman encourages them like, it doesn't mean you're a bad character, despite how much you may lose. Honestly, I think it'd make more sense if it was Goku. Uh, I don't know. I feel like Batman's also, Batman's also given some pretty uh, good speeches to characters, and plus yeah, he's fair. definitely lost a few more times. Even if. By the way, to quick, to Sorry. quickly just like go back to the Tony and Blake thing. Oh, like the ending for that, I was thinking it was just going to be, ah, uh, it's all right. I'll get it fixed. You're lucky. I love your movies. Um. Uh, anything you want to add, end that on, Sean? No, the last thing I'll bring up again, even though Bill talked about this, that has to be one of the most creative deaths we've had this season. Like, na the nano machine just destroying Batman from out of nowhere. I thought the hammer was going to be the deciding death blow because of the whole thing we've had so far of there being nothing left. Hmm. Well, I mean, technically his death. skeleton is still left. And those boots. Those shiny, shiny red boots. <laughs> Dude, that must have taken so much work to somehow put the Iron Man sprite over the Batman sprite as well. Without mm. it looking like just, you know, taking off sprite Batman's head and just putting it on top of the Iron Man body. Well, so if you just pause at the right moment, it just looks like, well, yeah, Batman just wearing an Iron Man suit, like the Iron Bat or something. Yeah, but you can, there are a few moments you can see Batman's trying to break out of it. There's a few, like, blacks. Either, either that or there's just, they forgot to uh, color those in. But I like to think it's Batman trying his best to get out of the suit. Yeah. Honestly, this was a fantastic way to come back. I know it's Marvel vs. DC, people hate that, but... Only a vocal like minority. With Lex Doom, like with Lex vs. Doom, this was a really well put together Marvel vs. DC episode. I'd, I'd say agree. this was better than that. Fair enough. Yeah, and... And, Nate, I believe it is your go. Yes. Okay, I'm going to start this off with a bit of a hot take. I think I might have enjoyed this episode more than I did Iron Fist vs. Poe. Wow, really? Is that really Same. a hot take? Because that episode's quite divided. I mean, to be fair, some of the people we know said that Iron Fist vs. Poe was the best episode of the first half. Yeah, I, I don't get that. Uh, but, uh, you know, for reasons. But uh, a few things I think definitely help for it is, okay, that moment right after the hammer gets fired, like, big explosion, and then the music kicks back in as it cuts to Tony, like the, wow! Like, I don't know what it is, I freaking love that moment. It just like, has me jamming out to the soundtrack more. It was also kind of a twist. They try to make it fade out, like, oh yeah, Tony definitely won. Then it kicks back in, like, oh, the fight's not over. Yeah, it kept you, like, guessing constantly. Like, okay, so the Hellbat just destroyed the Godbuster. Oh, but Tony hacked it. The, here comes the hammer. Oh, Batman's still alive. Broke Tony's arm, but then, you know, nano suit. Boom. I, was, I also thought it was very... I never brought this up. It was very clever how they did the hologram suit. Because I really thought that wasn't going to come into anything. Yeah, a lot of people might... I think a lot of people missed that it broke after the hammer fired. Hmm. Because when they get into hand-to-hand, -hand, a lot of people I've seen like reactions to go, hologram suit, hologram suit. So, yeah, yeah so that's just... Like if you How do you animate first. a hologram getting destroyed anyway? Mm. Uh, is there anything else you want to uh, add? 
Well, one thing I found really funny after I uh, finished watching this. When I first saw the preview and Batman slipped that thing on the desk, my first thought was, oh, that's going to come back and bite Tony in the ass, isn't it? Oh, yeah. But I didn't realize yeah. until, like, the day before the episode came out, like, that explosion that goes off right away, that's what that was. Oh. Apparently it was a... It was the it was like the same bomb that was used in like the George Clooney uh, Batman movie. Hmm. Huh. Okay. Yeah. I, read, I generally but, thought that was going to be like summoning the final bat suit, which I thought they didn't talk about it much. But I thought like the hell bat suit was going to be like used throughout the majority of it. But then at the very last bit, when like similar to like how Tony used his last suit to defeat uh, Batman, I thought it was going to be like the opposite: of Batman summoning his suit, and that's what that was. It was like a beacon. Yeah, I'll get to the final bat suit in just a sec. But uh, looking back on it, what's hilarious? There's that moment where Tony grabs Bruce by the throat. Hmm. Oh, you think that's when the? Uh, it's when he snuck the, the suit him? into him. Ah. Because that's the only time he got like physical contact with him before the uh, Hellbat came on. That is true. True. That is clever. Clever. Yeah. So and they did something like I thought they were going to, but in the opposite way. Hmm. And people were, might have been like, oh, but wait, they fought hand to hand on Earth. Tony specifically said he snuck it back on the watchtower. Yeah. That's clever. Hmm. So, Open to how intelligent Bruce and Tony are. Yeah. It's, yeah. uh. It's insane. Actually, I do want to... Sorry, mate, I'm going to briefly take over, but you took my watchtower bat thing, so I guess I'm going to take this bit. People yeah, did, go for it. People did kind of complain that Batman didn't really show his intelligence in this episode, and I disagree with that. Because at no point did I think Batman was being dumb. You know, he tried to keep a distance away from Iron Man to get his suit, he set up a trap, and then, you know, he fought, you know, took out his main suit, which would have guaranteed him the win. So... You know, that was a lot of a very clever way to take out the Iron Legion, too. Hmm. Oh, well, yeah, then he summoned shadows to take out all the other suits. It's like, were people watching the same death battle? Not to mention surviving Soul Hammer. Yeah, so Batman wasn't dumb. He was being strategic and keeping a distance so he could last longer in the fight. I don't get... I sometimes feel like people don't pay attention to death battles unless their character's winning. Yeah. Oh, no, that's absolutely true. Like, um... Uh, calling back to Goku vs. Superman 2, when they aired that live uh, SGC, and, well, SGC is a... No, no, yeah, it was SGC, sorry. Yeah. Uh, okay, <laughs> slightly lost my train of thought there, but <laughs> after the uh, result, yeah, Superman won again, and that was the end of the episode. A lot of people just got up and walked out. They didn't bother listening to the reasoning, or any of the extra stuff that they said in the panel. Yeah. It was just like, Goku lost, I'm out of here. Yeah, so... Mm. <laughs> Smells like a salty room, that room. So we we literally saw what most YouTube viewers are like. The moment they see something they don't like, they immediately leave without seeing the reason. <laughs> but, yo, I, I feel like if you shouldn't insult or make fun of people who get a little salty because you know people oh, yeah, it can do happen to just about anyone yeah like i've been salty with death battles in the past like not, i have to not as of now i definitely think i'm a lot better at handling loss in death battles because my brain kicks into they're just cartoon characters who gives a shit <laughs> like until death battles start bringing in real people to have them fight to the death then i'm gonna probably be a bit emotional <laughs> you know can you imagine, like, they do some, like, Jurassic Park thing, they bring back real-life warriors just to have them fight? <laughs> you mean Deadliest Warrior? Where the f*** did you get Jurassic Park? Because they're using their DNA to resurrect them, just to have them fight to the death. Ah. <laughs> Look, like, they get the DNA of Hitler and they put him up against Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> and we are now cancelled. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for tuning in to last discuss death battle. Oh, I've said much worse on this channel. <laughs> um, no true. So, uh, uh, you're also, right, I want to just uh, quickly just. So, a lot of people might complain about, oh, the final bat suit wasn't in the fight. Like, what the hell was that about? Hmm. 
And yeah, a lot of people in terms of the debate aspect in the three month hiatus that we had were saying, oh, if the final bad suit is involved, then yeah, Bruce is guaranteed to win because it can rewrite people's minds. Hmm. I definitely need to it look is, up that comic. It is touched upon in like one of those black boxes. It says, and I quote, the final bat suit could in theory be used to control Tony Stark's mind, but between dealing with Mephisto and his AI backups, it was not enough to be a deciding factor. Yeah. Because didn't they mention that Tony has like AI backups of himself and also just, you know, he has Friday and a bunch of other AIs that could control his suits? Yeah. Um... I guess, again, to touch upon it, you know, something else that some people from Death Battle viewers don't seem to understand, one specific theory doesn't guarantee a lot of fights. Because theoretically, yes, Batman could have totally avoided the nano suit and just finished him off, and there could have been a chance that Iron Man wouldn't have been able to help hack the bat suit, but again, it's kind of like one out of a million, you know, you've got to look at the rest before you come to a conclusion. Because I've always said that for Death Battles, like, each episode, there's probably a way a certain character could win every single one of their fights. Well, maybe yeah, not like Quicksilver, for example, but maybe not Quicksilver. Oh yeah, definitely not Quicksilver. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, like, Blake versus Mikasa, there's definitely a way Mikasa could have won. Um, oh yeah, if she, like, landed a solid hit with a uh, Thunder Spear, then, yeah, that would have been a win. Sonic versus Mario, um, both, you know... Obviously, when you look at the original one, they kind of used Archie feats as well, but even Game Sonic, there's definitely ways he could have beaten Mario, so... Mm -hmm. But I just feel like most people try and think of that one theory, but don't try and look into anything else. Mm. Uh, anything else you want to add? Because we are getting to the 40 minute mark. Uh... <laughs> I had some of them, but I forgot what it was. Damn it. Did you want to talk about the other suits that were mentioned? Mm, nah, I think I'm, I think I'm set, honestly. Alright then. So, I guess we should, since we have gone on for quite a bit about this episode, I'll be relatively brief on the next time. Oh uh, yeah, I think we all are. So, uh, I'll yep, just... I'll just flash on through this. 